Hey everyone! Hey homegirls and homeboys. <laughs> I am here with Lori Harder. Hi guys! I just met her. Girl, she is all that and a bag of chips, okay? <laughs> so, um, we are here at your beautiful home. We are hanging mm. out in LA, Santa Monica. Mm -hmm. And Lori, tell us a little bit about yourself. So, I'm going to keep it real. Mm. I look at her and I say she is just this beautiful blonde mm woman. She got it going on. She's got a new book coming out. We're going to talk about that in a second. And what could you possibly know about struggle and, you know, insecurities mm. and all of these things? Tell us a little oh. bit about your story and what got you to writing this book. Mm. Uh, it's called A Tribe Called Bliss. And I love that. Thank you. And yeah. thank you so much for coming over. And, you know, I... I love that question because it still seems so weird to me to hear it because uh -huh. I grew up a um, kid who struggled with her weight. Um, I grew up in a really small town. My whole family was overweight. And mm -hmm. honestly, I went on this mission thinking, uh, because I was bullied because of my weight and my religion in school. Really? Um, what was your religion? I was raised in a really strict religion. I was raised uh, Jehovah's Witness. And okay, I, I have some friends who were raised that way too. So we were not allowed to associate with people um, outside of that No, you have, to, you have to stay with your own kind yes. and, and not be unequally yoked and all of that. For sure. Yes. So that meant, um, you know, and as a kid I always wanted to be really active. I wanted to um, be a dancer, I wanted to be a performer, mm -hmm. but because I wasn't allowed to go and do those extracurriculars, um, we, it, basically I just stayed home. And I created the story in my head that I was um, better off alone. So that became my wall. I'm better off alone, that way I won't get teased, that way I won't get bullied. And then I also thought that if I built, if I lost weight and then built this like powerful, beautiful exterior that no one could make fun of me again. So I spent the next X amount of years, 10, Focusing 15 years, thinking that if I just look a certain way, no one could ever affect me again. So I built this, I mean, it went for literally like basically bodybuilding, fitness competitions. Of, yeah, that's right, because like, you're a cover model. You, you, I mean, you're a fitness. fitness. I wanted to be strong. I wanted muscles. I wanted to look confident. I wanted to look unmessable with. And... So spent my, basically all, all through my 20s doing that as well. So I went on my first diet at like eight years old, legitimately. Oh my gosh, so eight years old. Because my whole family was overweight. So what my older sister was doing, what my mom was doing, I was doing. Right. Um, you learned by example. Totally. Mm -hmm. uh, and, you know, what I learned really quickly is that even though they were telling me that it was my genetics, that I, you know, this was going to be my fate this too. Is who you, this is who you are. This is what your right. body is. Right, and just hearing that in the family, they they never did it viciously. They never did it in a way that was like, you're this or that. It was, this is us. Mm -hmm. um, this is who we are. This is the family. This is, you know, we struggle with our weight. These are our genetics. So right. it wasn't until I really started to, um, I begged my mom for fitness magazines because I was like, I, need, I just want to learn what this looks like to not let this be my fate. Mm -hmm. um, started reading those, would just devour them cover to cover. I would go to the library and like, print off from oh books God. like bodybuilding books like how to i would have stacks of like in wow. uh this, is, this is like pre, pre this is pre-internet days <laughs> ten cents, i had a trapper keeper too. ten cents a copy you guys ten cents a copy on these trapper keeper or for this trapper you were, keeper you were committed you were really, really, mm -hmm. you were really that was sort of your whole goal and it was I feel it when you're saying it, it was the pain of that. It was that the was kind of propelling you to do that. Yeah. So what I ended up realizing though in my mid twenties is you can, you know, I entered all these fitness competitions. I ended up after six years final, which was a very long journey, six years, finally winning a competition. Wow. Um, and then going on to market myself to get on covers cause that did not come after that. Okay. okay. Right. Yeah, I right. had to push that out again. Mm -hmm. Um, but what I was realizing is all of my dreams were coming true, but I still felt wildly unfulfilled. And wow. at the time I had opened a gym because I thought it was my life's purpose to help women not feel that pain ever again. So I wanted to give them the tools to, you know, feel confident, build that body that they feel confident in. Mm -hmm. And, it, you know, in the middle of that journey, it was like, I can't get results from these women if we don't talk about their mindset and like what actually fuels It's them. not just physical. No. It's because, like, and, and your struggle stemmed from how you felt about yourself on the inside. Yes. Because you were so unhappy with how you looked on the outside. Mm -hmm. But the outside is inextricably linked to 
the inside. Yes. Just like we're not just all mind, we're not just all heart, we're mm -hmm. a whole combination of everything. Totally. And I always think about, you know, we try to, we um, try to fill a, a spiritual void with food or things. Yes, or things. <laughs> yes, shopping or yes. Uh, alcohol, mm -hmm. drugs, mm -hmm. uh, sex. Numbing, anything to numb. Anything mm -hmm. not to feel. Mm -hmm. So you did that and you focused on all of the physical aspects and then you realized, okay, this isn't necessarily bringing the kind of fulfillment that I was hoping for or that mm -hmm. I thought I would get. And so does that bring us to now? It brings us to now, but there was a good year where you you struggle with your identity. Because I was like, well, if I'm not this fitness person and I want to move into kind of like mindset or self-development, what does that look like? And right. people had only known me as fitness. And who's this fitness girl talking about spirituality and Who is she? mindset? She, and she's not an ordained not, minister. Yeah. She's not a, you know, a psychologist. Totally. And it right. was the whole, like, who am I to talk about this? Who am I to do this? And I'm thinking... But if I don't do this, nothing's going to change. And right. it's like that inner knowing that you mm -hmm. get, like that soul hit that you get. It's like we, you either hit. choose to listen and go with it or your mind immediately comes in and tries to cover it up. And mine right. did that many times. Mm -hmm. um, I also had developed in my teen years like severe panic attacks and anxiety over just, uh, I think, the fear and the bullying and also just the fear of never being good enough. Yeah is what I was, you know, the story that I made up about my religion is that I was like not, I was guilty, I was shameful, of course. I was not good a enough. Lot of, so a love. lot of us women deal with that. Yes, it just, it doesn't matter religion or not. Yeah, right. Um, what we saw, what story we made up maybe from our parents or from our churches or from schools or whatnot. So for me, it just manifested in the form of panic attacks and anxiety whenever Jeez. attention was put on me at yeah. all. Um, even socially, like when I first met my husband, we would go to like a bar and meet people and I'd have to like two drink minimum to talk to people wow. <laughs> and be like, wow. I can't even talk to it. So I, right. you know, because my, my whole thing in, in the book is about tribe, but my whole thing is like it, what fear grows in isolation, like shame grows in isolation. Um, you know, all, all of these things grow in isolation. Meaning but, when you're just stuck with your own thoughts. Yes. Like they mm. just spiral down because one bad thought grabs onto the next bad one. thought grabs onto the next bad thought like you're constantly building on whatever thought is in your mind so until we get around people until we get around elevated people elevated thoughts podcasts elevated books whatever that looks like for you it's like you can't actually grasp that next thought and you think you're the only one so when you think you're the only one it's like I'm it's so, so alone I'm so bad I'm so you know, whatever that looks like for you. Um, so this is a tribe called Bliss. Yes. And so this whole idea, uh, I've noticed this word gets, is getting tossed around a lot. Mm -hmm. This idea of tribe. Um, and it's very tribal. So to mm -hmm. me it's kind of like primitive and it goes back to early days, early man, early woman. Mm -hmm. um, you're saying though to surround yourself with a tribe of women. How come I can't get you in the shot? <laughs> <laughs> it's like turning the other way. Speaking of tribe, and then it's all on me, and it's now it's dark. Um, there we go. So, tell me about this idea, girl. We have to get up. Okay, we're just like gonna go with this. Let's just go with this. Um, this idea of a tribe of women and surrounding yourself with these people who are going to encourage you to be your, I mean, really your best self, right? Yes. Well, number one, it's, I think it's the most important thing that we do um, because our environment is stronger than our willpower. Like we become our environment. Why are we so worried about when our kids go to school, if they're hanging around Bobby or Susie or That's Mike, true. because they bring those habits home. Yes, and it's bad like, influence. Yeah. Or it could be a good influence. It exactly. goes either way. Totally. Right. And, you know, I think that we, you can think of it this way, like you're only going to go as far as the limiting beliefs of your friends. Like you're just mm. not going to be able to break out of Because they're going to kind of hold you down because, uh, you know, maybe you're, you know, you, you have dreams, you have hopes. And then if they don't, if they're not on board with mm -hmm. you, you feel embarrassed or maybe you think oh, I'm going to fail or she's right. I'm not going to be able to do it anyway because I'm this or that mm -hmm. or whatever the challenge might be that, you know, the, the obstacle. Yeah. And it's, you know, it's normal self-preservation for a human to, um, want to keep you where they're at as well. So, so that they feel it's very tribal, right? It's yeah, like, it is very tribal. You can't tribal. leave the village. If you try to leave the village, right. we're going to say that you will not be loved or you're not welcome back or why are you acting that way? So 
you know, the normal reaction, which really helps as you're building a tribe or leaving a tribe or whatever that looks like, is to have compassion for those people because mm -hmm. it really is um, the way that we try to uh, stop people from leaving us is to cause them, the quickest way to stop them is to cause them pain, right? Mm -hmm. to, to let them know your life is going to be painful after that or to mm -hmm. say you're never going to find anyone. Or, it's fear. Yeah, it's fear. So fear is always trying to stop you. Mm -hmm. And even if they love you, some people are like, why is my family doing this to me? Well, they have fear that you're going to leave them behind or you're going to change and right. that's going to change the dynamic and that's, what is that going to say about their life if mm -hmm. you're able, if you come from that same family and you reach your dreams? Well, so. it makes them feel inadequate. Mm -hmm. And so... Um, this idea, it's a little bit contrary. I mean, what you're saying makes sense. It's true. I believe it, mm -hmm. but it's a little bit contrary too to what people, what we also have been taught. Like, uh, you're your own person and you have to do it all by yourself. Yes. And you're saying, no, it's the power of the, of the sisterhood, the tribe. And I believe that, you know, there's, there's really rare cases that can make it on their own. But I think that if you look at their backstory mm -hmm. there's so many people on that journey that's right there's so many you're not an island journey. it's you're no. never you're never completely by mm -hmm. yourself and um i think that your journey is accelerated when you're with people because if you think about it it's like i could go on this journey of helping women and putting on events and writing a book on my own mm -hmm. or I could get so much input and be supported, have fun instead yeah. of feeling isolated, find a woman who's better at um, something that I want to bring to my event than me. Why would I go spend time learning about that? Use her strength. An expert and all of right. it. Right. Um, it really alleviates so much of the um, challenge, the loneliness, the isolation, and it accelerates it. It speeds mm -hmm. everything up because mm -hmm. when you go into relationships saying, I'm, I want to support you as much as I support my dreams. Mm -hmm. um, and you make conversation around that and you create actual agreements. Like that's what the book is all about is mm. a lot of times the reason we're afraid of tribe or we're afraid to enter into another relationship is because we don't have the verbal agreements and we feel other people's expectations or we feel our expectations being put out there. Right. There's nothing that a conversation and boundaries could not fix. Mm -hmm. So it's really how to have the conversations and how to set the boundaries. Yeah. And all of the things that stop uh, women from connecting with other women. It's like all these stories mm -hmm. and all these projections and all of these things that we take personal. And it's navigating what comes when you decide to really deeply connect and have this supportive tribe. And so, I mean, talking about that too, it, it, it almost feels like, you know, you have to leave yourself open, mm -hmm. which means leaving yourself vulnerable, mm. which means there's a chance that you're going to experience some pain or maybe somebody's going to hurt you or mm -hmm. you think you find uh, some women or a woman that you can really trust and it doesn't go the way you mm -hmm. thought it was going to. And that's, so I've talked to so many women and I, you know, I've done a lot of like Facebook posts trying to research where are we actually at in our female relationships right, right. now. And, um, did you talk to a lot of women for your book? Yes. Well, I, and I had a lot of experience. Yeah. This exact thing. <laughs> so, um, cause I went on like this journey, like this rampage of like building my tribe. Uh -huh. Um, so I can honestly tell you, I have some insanely amazing tribe but along the way I experienced some incredible heartache that mm -hmm. that legitimately at one point I was so depressed there was there was some things that some women did to me that were so painful that I just didn't even want to like get out of bed in the morning because I just wow. felt so hopeless right um and especially it was around you know because we as human beings especially women we're really amazing manipulators ah. like, <laughs> She's keeping it real. We, use, we know how to use the, yeah, that's true. like we know that's exactly true. what could um, hurt, hurt someone, someone. Or another friend yeah. or whatever. And, yes. and the book also talks about that. Like when we're, you, when we're, when we're using these things or when we're maliciously gossiping, like we're playing mm. with someone's life. Like no, it's, it's not true. just an, oh, it's not an okay thing to do. Like this yeah. is actually someone's soul and someone's life. So even if you hate them or they did something to you, it's like there are repercussions to. They're a human being. Yeah. They're not yes. just a thing that you can. Uh, you know, she's some stupid bitch. Yeah. It's a real person. Who has a real backstory that you may not know. That's right. That she might, you know, maybe you did get treated like total crap. Mm -hmm. Maybe something terrible did happen to you, but we don't know what her husband what her, did or friend. We her, don't know what her story you know, is. We have no idea what her backstory is. It, it kind of goes to that whole thing, too, of like, 
uh, you know, my husband says this a lot too, is like, you don't know what that person's been through. Mm -hmm. You don't know what that person went through today. Uh, maybe it's the person cutting you off on the, on the street or, yeah. you know, who doesn't say hi back or who's rude to you at the grocery store. Um, mm -hmm. and I think Oprah's the one who said it too, is like, everybody has a story that, uh, you know, an experience that has made them laugh and that has made them cry. Mm -hmm. And so it's kind of getting back to that point where we all realize that um, no matter all of our differences, we really are the same. Mm -hmm. And it's about judging, just like I did at the beginning of this video, you know, I'm judging mm -hmm. her, of course, with love, girl, with love. <laughs> but it's like, you know, you're beautiful, you're blonde, your body is, is jamming. And so, um, you know, of course you have it going on. Mm -hmm. uh, of course you have, uh, you know, perfection. And of course, I know that's not true. It doesn't, it doesn't matter who you are, what you look like. I mean, look at somebody like a Marilyn Monroe, right? Mm -hmm. She was considered the most beautiful. She had fame. She had fortune. She had all these people loving her. And yet she was one of the most, you know, um, tragic stories. Mm -hmm. So um, I think that's what it is, is that we, we, we judge people thinking either, you know, oh, they're terrible and they're awful or, well, they have it all put together. Mm -hmm. And so now I feel bad about myself. Yes. Totally. And we never allow ourselves the vulnerability or the discomfort to actually move through a conversation that would go, oh my God, I love you. Like, yeah. I'm so <laughs> glad we got a conversation because right. I would be missing I never out known. on you. Yeah. And, and we're like, it makes me want to cry because of what we are missing out on when these, when we prejudge a woman who's either stunning or who's, you know, not someone that we think we would get along with, or right. maybe someone who what is she wearing or what is she thinking yes. or what is, why is she hanging around? Like all of these projections every single day that if you're feel, if, I swear, God, higher power, whatever you believe in, like has the most amazing sense of humor because I truly believe that our, our most beautiful blessings are hidden in the people we would never expect. Yeah. And it's our job to go around and find like these different hidden parts of our soul that are man like that. in other people. I love that. So it's like collecting, um, you know, one of my friends who I actually write about in the book, who's kind of like, it's based on a few women who I created this tribe with. Um, she always says collect people and she doesn't, it, it's said mm. in a positive way because right. we can't rely on one woman or one man or a couple friends even hmm. to fulfill us. Like we are so multifaceted That's true. that for people to show up fully how they're meant to show up in our lives, um, you know, especially the supporting characters we need uh, or leading characters, uh -huh. we need a lot of supporting characters. Yeah. That's that and makes sense. it alleviates like wanting my husband to be the guy who's going <laughs> to analyze with me. And he's like, for the love of God and getting mad at him when he doesn't. Right. And you know, wanting my it's best too friend much pressure. to be, it's way too much pressure. pressure. It's yeah. like, you know, this is my workout friend. This is my wine drinking friend. This is my writing friend. This is my yes. yoga friend. Like, let them be who mm -hmm. they are. And we. And it doesn't yeah. have to be more or less. And you don't have to judge that. Yes. You just appreciate it, right? Yes. That's mm -hmm. what it's really coming down to. Totally. Um, what, in, what else have you... I mean, you're just so full of, you know, um, insight and wisdom. But um, what do you want women to know you know, or, or what is it that, what's the one thing that you, that you really learned, um, just through, through your life experience, through writing this book, a tribe called mm. bliss, what is it, is there, is there that one piece of wisdom or uh, a mantra or advice that, you know, kind of keeps you going or that you feel that can really help women? I've got two. So I'll start mm -hmm. with one. Um, good. The journey of even creating tribe or living a happy life is, is learning to what, what your most authentic version of you looks like. And there's not one authentic version of you. It's literally, I think it's changing every single day mm -hmm. and it's, um, asking questions like, what does my soul want to do today? What does my soul want to wear today? Would I, where did I betray myself today? Like, what did I want to say that I didn't say today? Ah. Um, what did I want to do that I neglected myself of? Who did I want to compliment that I held that back? Oh, that's um, so good. Really looking at why are you eating that salad? Like, why do you want to, does your soul want to, or are you doing it because you were with your friend who eats salad? Like right, really like seeing how that. you, yeah, the super basic stuff you can start practicing on and then use the bigger things like how can you show up more you at work? Are you really funny, but you're not showing that, but uh -huh. you could actually, you know, somehow create an opportunity to use your humor, which would get people to really 
authentically feel like them and give them permission. Like I believe our whole job is to be fully us and give people permission to be fully them, like the walking permission. Mm -hmm. And the only way that we can be walking permission is to give ourselves permission. And yes. the thing is we judge ourselves after we be us. So it's yes. like, sometimes I'll be me in front of a woman and I'm like, I should have said that. Why did I say, why did I wear this outfit? Am I making right. someone feel bad? Oh my God. Yeah. They're going to think I'm like this, or I don't want to show up like this. Like all, this is what's going on. Right. Yes. And we're just all, like, it happens to all of us. We all do it. Like, I just want to be friends with someone <laughs> except this, this voice in my head is uh -huh. like going crazy. Um, so practice being fully you every single day and it's not gonna you're gonna hit that your head's gonna hit the pillow at night and you're gonna be like okay I did one or two things that felt better mm -hmm. um and then one day you're gonna show up and be like wow I really feel like I flowed through the day like in a really beautiful way that felt open and like I wasn't in prison and I felt like myself and and you're not worried you're not worrying so much yes right? oh my god you really enjoy yourself like that whole theme of uh <laughs> so funny I was on a walk the other day and and I went down this rabbit hole of analyzing what it means to enjoy yourself. And it's like, it's not even about going to the event or being with the person to enjoy yourself. It's actually about enjoying the experience of being you. Ah. Isn't that beautiful? Like when you think of when going, you really think about yes. it and you really understand that, yeah. of course. So who's making you feel the most like you? Who's making you feel the most free? What events ah, are making you feel the yes. most free? Like where you can you just really, kind of yeah. let your hair down yes. and, and really just be yourself. You know it, you, mm -hmm. you know, you know when you feel that way. Mm -hmm. And so you need more of that. More of and that. you need more of the, of the ladies in your life mm -hmm. who, like you're saying, give you permission to be more of that. And when, they accept when you're that, you. You're a magnet for that tribe. Like That's you're just true. a magnet for other women who are also on that journey. And it's like when you can show up, when everyone can show up com feeling complete as themselves, like I'm free to be me, mm -hmm. that is when you all, you just, you dance, like your personalities just dance together and you support each other. And you can say, oh my God, you're amazing at that. That's a weakness for me. I would love to bring that into my life. So I feel like it's one of my strengths. Yes. Instead mm -hmm. of feeling the other way that yeah. I think that we end up going is oh my God, she's so much better at that. Either you turn it into feeling uh, jealous mm -hmm. or and, and then judgmental of that because mm -hmm. you're hating on that because secretly you really wish that you had that. Um, instead of, like you just said, mm -hmm. celebrating that, that part of her yes. and then taking it as a strength of your own because you're all together and you don't have to do it by yourself. Mm -hmm. That's the whole point of... of of what you've learned and what your book is about, right? I mean, totally. it's a tribe called bliss. Mm -hmm. And so the tribe together with the tribe is, um, I mean, are you kind of saying that that's when you find your bliss? That's when that's the happiness. Well, there's there, I mean, science is proving the people who feel the, the, the happiest, the people who are the healthiest, the people mm -hmm. who are living the longest, they all go back to one thing. And that is they feel supported in their social circles and connected. I think that speaks to the fact too that we're not just um, uh, these islands, that we really are um, social creatures. Mm -hmm. I think that's how our creator made us, mm -hmm. uh, the universe. And, um, you know, even though we're all about self empowerment and, you know, um, being responsible for your own choices and it's, it's your choice ultimately, uh, I really like your message and I think it's so truthful that. Um, you do need good people around you mm -hmm. and it's okay. And you're not, I almost feel a little bit personally sometimes like if I can't do it all by myself, then mm -hmm. I'm weak mm -hmm. and there's something wrong with me. And why does she seem to be able to do it all by herself? And mm -hmm. I can't do it all by myself. There's such a good quote. Um, it's, you feel weak when you are relying on your own strength. Mm -hmm. you, you feel all of your power when you realize it's not, you're not supposed to rely just on you. Right. It's all of, you know, it's God, Buddha, energy, your sisters, <laughs> your tribe, your family. Like yes. we're, that's why historically we are tribal mm -hmm. because you are meant to connect and use all of each other's strengths in the village and pull it together. Yes. Mm -hmm. Like we're just it. a puzzle piece and we think we're the whole puzzle and it's not, that's why we're all miserable. <laughs> <laughs> but you are a girl. <laughs> but and I'm here, I'm <laughs> I love it. And did it take you a long time to get your tribe? Like, you know, you have like, you know, are they like, they're like your BFFs or is part of your tribe, like you were saying, and this is probably in the book too, um, 
you know, she's good at this. This is my friend for mm -hmm. that. I'm not going to try to make her any kind of like let life flow. Yes. You know, if she becomes closer or more part of your life, then that's great. And, and then you just let it happen naturally. Mm -hmm. uh, is that's all part of the tribe. And then maybe you yes. have like a, a few, I've got a core. Uh, yes. And then I have, you know, then I have, they're spread out all over. Like mm -hmm. it's almost like we have these agreements cause we kind of create them. Like maybe I just do a podcast with a woman. I feel that amazing energy and I, I don't withhold it anymore. I say, I love you. You're awesome. I would love to support you. How could we stay connected? Even if it's just once a month or once every two months, yeah. or just let me know when you have a program coming out or a po like, let me support you. Right. So, cause that's, you know, we're all, we're all on this women empowerment thing, but we have to remember to not just bond over drama. We have to bond over supporting each other. What do you want? Mm -hmm. What would, what, you know, what's the highest vision for your life? Mm -hmm. What makes you happiest? What makes you feel good? And how can I support that? Mm -hmm. um, and then some real conversation can start under that instead of what happens when this problem goes away. Like yeah. how else do we connect? Like, what are we going to do? Yeah. Um, you know, it's, it's creating, uh, deep connections, not only just over dramatic things in your life, but over the really good things. Yes. I love it. Lori, you are fabulous. <laughs> and thank you for putting up with, uh, me and this gimbal. You know, I love so it. We <laughs> kind of had to like, we had to, it was we fun. We kind of do this a little bit, but it's okay. We'll get, we'll get it. We'll have another conversation, but, uh, tribe called bliss. And this book is, you can just get it on Amazon, right? Yep. LoriHarder.com forward slash Amazon or just look on Amazon. And check out LoriHarder.com. Oh my gosh, we love you. <laughs> I'm so grateful. Yay. Thank you for having me. Yay. Bye-bye. Bye, guys.